At Shinewater Primary School in Eastbourne, a class of Year 5 children is learning about the Tudors as part of the Key Stage 2 history curriculum. But this is no ordinary lesson. Their teacher has organised a special visit to the National Archives, one that doesn't even require them to leave their classroom. They're going to be taking part in a video conference and using the National Archives website, The Learning Curve, to access original historical documents. If you've got an online activity showing them the real document, it says real document on it, um, or they're um, talking to a, an expert about it, somehow it becomes much more real to them and they can use a lot more imagination with it and take themselves back to that time. The children begin their day by visiting the court of Henry VIII online. Here they will learn about court protocol and how the Tudors lived. This forms part of a larger scheme of work about life in Tudor times. The year is 1539. You work at the court of King Henry VIII. You are a page. Your job is to carry out tasks for the king. Henry wants to write a letter. He wants your help. Can you find King Henry VIII's writing desk? You'll need to use all of this information to help you do the task that you've been set. You will have to follow the rules of the court. At the end of the task, you have a letter to write. Any questions before we begin? I looked through the website that's linked to the National Archives, the Learning Curve website, and found lots of activities, very useful activities and online activities that, that they have produced, um, lesson plans and sources and all sorts of things that I built the, the day around. Let's look at the next bit. The boys who work in the kitchen shall not go naked. So it sounds as though he wrote these rules because the boys in the kitchen at Elton Palace used to run around with no clothes on. Exactly. Not very pleasant in the kitchen, is it? Any, or any time, really. We began the day by uh, looking at sources from Elton Palace, some of the uh, rules that were set down, um, looking at what would happen for King Henry getting up in, in the morning and the roles of the different people within the palace. I have to say that Daniel and Chantelle have written a very, very corny bit in theirs. Roses are red, violets are blue, sugar is sweet and so are you. I am strong, powerful and rich and you can have your own dog if you want, and some money too. Henry VIII is supposed to be a poet. I think he could perhaps come up with something a little bit better than <laughs> roses are red, violets are blue. But maybe that is the limit of his poetry today because he's just so excited about writing the letter to Anne of Cleves. And then we mo moved on to some of the online activities which okay. were the children using evidence themselves to make decisions um, about um, things to do with the court using historical documents. Thinking about the sorts of things that we just had that he was telling us that he owned on that inventory, answer the first question. Where do you think Edward lived? In the seaside, by the seaside, in the town, or in the countryside? Yes. Click on which one, whichever one you think. Yes. While the children at Shinewater School are getting ready for their video conference later that day, a class of GCSE students is visiting the National Archives for real. They are studying the suffragette movement as part of their history course. Eucaria O'Grady is running the workshop. She will also be hosting the video conference with Shinewater. And the, a lot of these files are quite thick. There's masses and masses of information in them. And sometimes how you know important something is by the amount of information in the file. And one of the things you first be asked to do is write down the reference. So you'll find the reference in the front. And you've got to remember these are the originals. These are nearly 100 years old, so they're quite fragile. And also, the writing can sometimes be a little bit hard to read. It's all sometimes written in pencil. So that's going to be a reference. And as you look through it, you'll find different bits of information. I think the main benefit is that it makes children aware where history comes from. Because many believe that history just comes straight out as a history book, but of course it doesn't. History is a product of what people have done over the past 2,000 years or more. And the documents that we hold are records of those events. So therefore, by working with those documents, they get an appreciation of what has really been happening. I think you've got the one from that. Yeah, Emily Pankhurst, this is brilliant. Because you've got her actual um, trial. This is really good because this is something she wrote and it's actually got a seal on the top. It's broken apart. The Prime Minister has announced in the week the women's manhood suffrage bill will be discussed and voted upon. 
I think the minute you tell them that they're a historian, they realise they are, in a way, and they've got just as much right and access. And I think that really gives them a feeling of empowerment over history, that it is about how much they want to learn, how they go about finding the evidence, and how important their opinions are. And that's what I really appreciate about it as a subject and about being here, being able to get that across. It's their opinions that matter and that make history come alive, really. How about yourself? What did you find? Um, well, we had Emily in Pankhurst, and the, in this letter it says, but every member of the WSP recognised that the defeat of the amendments will make militancy more a moral duty and more a political necessity than it has ever been before. And later on it says that she will compare anything with the Civil War, which shows how um, they will go to any extent um, to be heard. What um, I most liked there was about how the government and the police acted towards the suffragettes at the time. I realised that the suffragette movement wasn't just based in London, it was like spread like in Dublin and everywhere, or Belfast as well, so it was quite a wide movement. Because there's so much information, you don't know, it's all in a mix-up order, so you have to kind of work that out for yourself. Oh, it's so exciting. I felt like a real historian. Um, no, it was really exciting. But they're so fragile, you don't want to break them, and you know, you're so worried of <laughs> ripping one or something, but it was really good. I think it's an absolutely fantastic resource. I had to wait till I was an undergraduate student before I went to the public record office in London and was able to handle primary sources. I think it's absolutely wonderful for the girls. One of the issues about coming to the National Archives is access and we're in West London so we're not ideally located for schools that are based a long way away from the capital. So what we have tried to do is to establish a range of activities including a video conference and a learning curve website which will allow schools from all around the country and indeed from around the world to gain access to our unique collection. Back at Shinewater Primary School, over the lunchtime break, Ruth is setting up the equipment for the afternoon video conference with Eukarya. The particular area that the children come from, it's difficult for parents to get out and about and go and see places uh, for many of them, and therefore we're very much into the development of uh, IT, and we wanted them to have access to lots of things, museums, all of those kinds of artefacts and things, uh, without having to take them anywhere. Hi, good afternoon. Welcome to the National Archives. My name is Eukarya. And I'm the Education Officer here at the National Archives. I'm going to show you a picture of where I work on your screens. And as you can see, it's a great big building here in Kew. Now, hands up, what do you think? I think we keep the great big building like this. Like a the conference gives the children a unique opportunity to see rare documents and talk with specialists. It's delivered through a set of planned interactive activities with the emphasis on fun. I'll show them a fantastic picture of Henry VIII, which they don't know is Henry VIII. They've got to tell me who they think it is, why they think that. It's a lot to do with usefulness and reliability. And they try and guess which tutor and they see all the symbols. How do we know when someone is royal? royal. What, what clues are there? Over in the hands are up. Because it's got a crown and it's got that like leopard, you know, that ermine. Yeah, ermine thing on. One of the first things we do as historians is we ask ourselves, what kind of document do we think this is? Hands up, what kind of document do you think it is? Thomas. A Tudor document. Tudor document? <laughs> Why do you think it's a Tudor document? Thomas again. Because it's got the Tudor rose at the top. Oh, wow, brilliant. Oh. Fantastic. It's got the Tudor rose. Excellent. So then we look at Tudor's signature, Henry's signature. Could we copy it? Probably could, so we'll use a seal. And then that's just to explain how seals work and how kings would have been very much into symbols because they showed power, but also people couldn't read or write. Well, you've done fantastic. And you've actually read to the handwriting so much so I'm going to get out my Tudor document. And I'm going to put on my glove. And I'm just going to show you now a document like that where it is very, very old. You see, it's very fragile. Just around the edges. We definitely don't want these words to disappear. And this document is actually nearly 500 years old. And these are actually the words of all the symbols. He wants on his horse. 
and the teacher hands out cards where she's blown up the words from that original document and we ask our Tudor handwriting experts, the audience, to tell me what Henry wanted on his horse. So they'll read the word son, castle, and then we'll try and put them on Henry's jousting horse to find out what all those symbols meant. And, ooh, uh, this one, number eight. They're not quite sure. Breathes fire. Dragon. Brilliant. It does say dragon. dragon. Well read. You remember to accept it's an aura. Very good tutor expert. It's got an extra E at the end of the end. Very scary dragon. symbol. Why a dragon? Um, because he, a uh, dragon's big and bold and brave. And he, Henry wants to show he's big and bold and brave like a dragon. That is a brilliant answer. I've learnt about the um, history of the Tudors and the life in Henry VIII's court. I learn um, how to read the Tudor writing, which at first I would have found quite hard. Um, I learn a lot of new stuff about Tudors that I would never have known. My favourite part was the video conference because um, the, I had a lot of fun trying to work out all the words. They have the real ones from the past, Tudor times. So it's really good and, like, it's real evidence. They seemed to enjoy the online activities um, this morning and the video conferencing. Even though it was quite a challenge for them, they responded extremely well. And they love anything where they can get really involved asking questions and, and doing things like that. Hey, good afternoon. Bye. The access to our experts is a really essential part of children's education. For them to be able to talk to experts, ask questions of experts and get an answer and feel valued by people who really, really know what they're talking about. Not just their class teacher, but somebody who they see as the real experts. That is very valuable for them. Let's go joust. Geoffrey Philpott, Robert Dudley, Earl of... While Ruth has used the National Archives resources to learn about the Tudors, subjects right across the history curriculum from Key Stage 1 to Key Stage 5 can be accessed in the same way. The Learning Curve website, video conferences and on-site visits are provided free. The school pays for the phone call for the duration of the video conference and, of course, invests in the necessary IT equipment. I think the National Archives is a superb resource. It's very good for the teachers. Uh, it's extremely good for the children because they get to see artefacts. They also get to have the expert opinions of people who work there and it enhances our curriculum and the topics that the children do. I think it went extremely well. Um, it's always a little daunting when you've got something um, a, a day of activities that you've never tried before um, and the children responded very, very well to them. They love using the computers, they love video conferencing and the whole thing has just gone very well. Details about using National Archives resources and how to set up video conferencing using an intelligent camera can be viewed by visiting the Teachers TV website.